Bees happen to be very complex creatures with more to them than meets the eye. Did you know our phones are causing them to leave their colonies? How that works, you'll have to see for yourself in just a moment. Another great mystery we'll solve today is why bees die after making love, which seems kind of counterproductive. And why in the world do they make love out in the open while flying as if they don't have a super intricate hive? Are they scared? These are just some of the bee mysteries we'll be buzzing about today. So without further ado, let's get started. Bees are blind without the sun. Earlier, we mentioned that bees are blind without the sun, but how does that work? We don't learn this stuff in school, even though it's very fun, so we'll do it for you. You know when you're in a car and you see a field of flowers pass by? It all seems like a rainbow of colors mushed together because of how fast the car moves, right? Well, our beloved bees don't see that. They see every single flower clearly. That's because they're used to flying at so much speed and just flying also helps them see depth as well as distance. Much like us, bees are also trichromatic, which means they have three photoreceptors that they base their color combinations on. We base them on red, blue, and green. At the same time, they base it on UV light blue and green. They can't even see red, but we can't see their purple, which is sort of a mix of yellow and UV light if there's no sun. Thadon can see any color or anything for that matter. It's almost like bees have a literal case of night blindness. Zombie bees. Beekeepers know a lot about bees and their behavior, but there have been instances where some bees went crazy and turned into zombies. And what are those, you might ask? Well, we'll explain. A guy named John Haffernick found a hive of bees, and since he was a biologist, he didn't want to get them experimented on. He set up some traps at night and found out that 80 bees were there. Now think about how many bees you've seen at night. Not one. That's because bees are technically blind at night. More on that later. But this was not standard bee stuff. Later on, he saw that a parasitic flay had injected its eggs into their bodies, which caused them to act all sorts of strange. And before dying, it performs a dance of death after being attacked by the apocasyphilus insect. It goes out into the night looking for artificial light and boom, falls to the ground right there. After being dead, the bees start to wiggle? After wiggling their heart out, maggots burst from their body like a scene from the movie Alien. The worst part is that these bees were found in many areas all over the West Coast and Bay Area. This is just a survey from the US. Think about all the zombies in other countries. Bees learn colors. If you were a bee, this is what your life would look like. This is what your life would be like. But that begs the question, which flowers do you go to first? Is it all random? Do bees just want to choose any flower or do they have favorites? Who even found out that bees can see color? All these questions were answered by an experiment done by Austrian zoologist Carl von Frisch. He taught his bees to eat up nectar from a small dish. Then he placed that dish on some blue paper so that the bees could see it. Then he placed the dish on top of different shades of gray paper along with a blue one. If bees can't see color, they should just feed on anyone, right? But bees went straight to the dish on top of the blue paper. Apparently, bees learn colors and associate them with high rewards. In the wilderness, bees don't check if every flower is there. They remember which ones had the most nectar and go straight to them. And according to that, the plants get cross-pollinated. That goes without saying how complex even the tiniest little creatures are. This is also why bees make the world go round. Honeybee dance. To be a bee, what do you have to be? A good dancer, of course. Bees might buzz a lot, but they can't really communicate like that. I could really get in trouble. So they do it by dancing. They have different dances to convey different messages. The first one is called the round dance that describes the announcement of a food source. Typically, the source is about 25 to 100 meters away from the hive or closer. First, the bee distributes some of their newfound nectar to the other bees, perhaps to show off a little, and then it goes in circles about three times, but rarely more because they get very buzzy. This dance does really give them directions, like a GPS. To find the real place, they have to use the odor of the flower. Moreover, the scow bee actually leaves some of its odor from the scent gland so others can find it. 
There's another dance called the waggle dance, which bees do when the food source is much farther. It's sort of a gradual transition dance that looks like the number eight. Each move is calculated, so it's not like they're dancing for fun. They express distance or the energy it would take to get there by the number of repetitions of that dance cycle. It may dance eight to nine times in just 15 seconds if the food source is 200 meters away, four to five if it's a thousand, and just three if it's 2,000. Imagine having to do so much math, even when you're a bee. Bee venom is medicine. If you were one of those kids that would poke at every insect, then there's a big chance you were stung by a bee, and it probably hurt a lot. That's because bee venom has a lot of biologically active compounds, but now things are different. This exact string has been found to be a possible cure for many diseases. It's now called apotherapy, which it's been around for centuries since ancient Egyptians reported using it. In fact, Hippocrates used bee venom to fix his joint pain and arthritis. With an increasing interest in natural medicine, the value of bee venom has grown. But what even is inside it? Scientists don't know what's inside it, but the few compartments we know of are melatonin, adolapin, and apamine. Basically, the concept behind all of this is that the inflammatory reaction accuses an anti-inflammatory response by the immune system. Consequently, it helps with arthritis and even MS, multiple sclerosis. But the crazy part is that some people get the venom right from the stinger. Moreover, bee sting therapists for everyone. Some people have been known to suffer from anaphylactic shock after an initial bee sting. Luckily, only a small percentage of the population is allergic to it. Whatever you decide to try, just get ready for the worst pain of your life. In-flight mating of the bee and why bees die after mating. Unlike humans, bees don't really care much for getting a room. When it's time to make love, these creatures will do it out in the open, in the air, just like that. In fact, there's even a unique way the queen bee mates with a drone, whose whole life revolves around getting it on with the queen bee. They're usually more prominent than worker bees and I have to always keep up with the queen bee, or she'll fly away, or worse, start mating with some other drone. When a drone finally gets to mount the bee, inserts his endophilus, and ejaculates, there's a little bit of an issue. The endophilus has actually ripped away from the drone and stays attached to the fertilized queen. When the drone shows up, he simply pulls out the previous endophilus and goes on to do the same. The poor old drone bee immediately dies after his endophilus is ripped out because it also rips open his abdomen. But that's all the resume requires him to do, so he's too crucial after that in the first place. Honeybees fly between 50 and 80 kilometers an hour, yet they can change direction quickly. What's the secret to this? In the middle of their M-shaped body, there's a tiny brain which tells the next section how to move. Bees can fly up to 50 to 80 kilometers per hour, and despite that, they can make perfect turns without any side slips, which happens when someone like a bus turns too quickly and you fall over. From a physics point of view, bees aren't even supposed to be able to fly, but here they are. When bees make a turn, they cleverly reduce their speed so that their centrifugal force is constant. So the sharper their turn is, the faster the bee will go. And it's not a learned behavior because when they were observed making turns, their dynamics were all the same regardless of their context. Moreover, bees always avoid collisions. When two of them approach each other head on at the same altitude, both of the bees turn left to avoid any collision. Sometimes they even say whoop when they bump into each other. It's a vibrational pulse that they produce. Many scientists thought it was just a sign to tell them to stop the other so they don't bump again. But it might just be an expression of surprise. They might not be so different from us. Bees collect blood, dead meat, dung, sweat, feces, urine, and tears. Honeybees aren't as sweet as you think. Among the natural honey nectar and sugar talk, we forgot to mention sweat bees, which is just a colloquial term for bees with other food sources. These bees don't just collect pollen and nectar for food. Some of them like to feed on the bodily fluids of the living and dead animals. This includes blood, sweat, tears, overmeat, faces, and even urine. They're not so cute anymore, are they? As you can see, this little sweat bee is trying to snack on a person's salt sweat. Sometimes stingless bees have very diverse taste and collect animal tissues as their primary protein source. 
This brings us to a weird and painful news story from a few years ago where four live bees were found in a woman's eye. They were sweat bees, so they were definitely looking for tears. Yikes, sorry for the nightmares. Colony Collapse Disorder – How Phones Kill Bees One of the most unusual phenomena prevalent in the bee world is CCD, or Colony Collapse Disorder. It occurs when most of the worker bees leave the bee colony, leaving behind a queen, all their food, but only a few nurse bees to take care of the baby bees. We have no idea why this happens and how to stop it. On top of that, our phones are making this worse. It sounds like a bizarre concept. How can our phones affect bees in any way? Well, here's the reason. Bees use electromagnetic fields to find flowers and have pollen sticking to them. But a massive boom in the tech industry leads to more electromagnetic radiation or, or EMR. Usually, Earth and every living creature emit EMR on a lower level. What scares the researchers is the excess of waves caused by cell phones and Wi-Fi signals. Many organizations have confirmed that bees themselves use the electromagnetic field to navigate their way. However, there is still evidence that EMR radiation can cause damage in honeybees. If you were about to throw your phone away from the bees, just calm down a bit. Let the researchers do their work, then we can whip our iPhones into the trash. For the bees, of course. Rare Male and Female Bee For the bee world, getting a job is easy. Not because they don't have inflation, but their sex determines what their job will be. A giant male bee is just a drone, and all he has to do is make eggs with the queen. So when Joseph Sigursnicki opened his beehive and saw two huge yellow eyes staring back at him, he knew something was wrong. When he looked closer, he saw that it was also weirdly large despite its eyes being a male honeybee drone. Not just that, the rest of its body was clearly female. From the abdomen, stinger to the wings, all of it was female. A bee expert weighed in on this and confirmed that it was a genetic condition. The condition caused the bee to be blind, thanks to the off-pigmenting of its eyes. Bees don't have the same biology as humans, clearly, so something like this was crazy rare. Humans get their chromosomes from their mom and half of them from their dads. But male bees don't come from fertilized eggs and only have one set of chromosomes, which belong to the queen. That's how male bees don't have fathers or sons, but they do have grandfathers and grandsons. Makes sense? If it doesn't, don't worry, we don't get it either. Biology's weird. Bees and dinosaurs live together. Have you ever wondered how long bees have been on Earth? We know that alligators and crocodiles are pretty old and haven't changed at all, but how do we know how long bees have existed? Thankfully, even insects leave behind fossils, and the oldest fossils of a bee looks more like a wasp who, in fact, used to be carnivorous mainly. This one seemed to be a vegetarian getting food from a tree. We know this because it was preserved in amber, which is just fossilized plant sap. Maybe they got stuck in there and couldn't get out, something that still happens today. All this bee history is just our background setting. What's remarkable is that bees and dinosaurs definitely lived during the same time. Dinos appeared around 245 million years ago, and old bee fossils have been found for 100 million years. Imagine a dinosaur getting stung by a simple bee while trying to munch on leaves. How cool would that be? Bees are nature's most prolific and economical builders. Scientists and mathematicians have for a long time argued that honeycombs are the most practical and most efficient structures around. The walls in the honeycombs meet at a precise 120 degree angle, exhibiting the most perfect hexagon in nature. In 36 BC, Greek mathematician Pappas of Alexandria came up with the honeycomb conjecture which shows the best way to divide a surface into equal parts with less total perimeter, an ideology which was borrowed from the way bees construct their honeycombs. Study of bees has led to major milestones in solving crimes. For the lovers of the thriller genre of films, what's the one pattern that almost all serial killers have in similarity? Well, they commit their heinous acts close to home, but far enough that neighbors never get suspicious. The study of bees has shown that they collect nectar and pollen near their hive, but far enough that predators don't find the hive. Notice the similarity? This study of bees has led to a greater understanding of this behavior, and the findings have continuously been used in computers used by law enforcement officers to nab criminals. Bees are a bunch of genius creatures. 
Have you ever heard of the traveling salesman problem? Imagine a scenario where a salesman has a list of locations that he must visit exactly once and has to return to the origin point using the shortest possible route to all destinations. Despite being the only insects that make food that man can eat, honeybees are the only animals known that are capable of solving the traveling salesman mathematical problem. Scientists from the Royal Holloway University found that bees fly using the shortest routes possible between flowers and their hive while collecting nectar and pollen. The brain of a bee is an alien thing. A bee's brain is one of the most advanced brains in the animal kingdom. Some bees are hardwired to perform specific tasks only. Undertaker bees are tasked with removing dead bees from the hive while scout bees have a brain pattern that compels them to search for new sources of food and shelter. On the other hand, soldier bees are wired to provide security for their entire life. However, there are regular bees that are not wired to a specific task, but rather perform multiple tasks. These regular bees will however change their brain chemistry when they take on a new task just to fit in. Just how amazing is that? Additionally, when aging and old bees take up tasks reserved for the younger generation, their brain stops aging and instead works like the younger ones. Compare this to you not only feeling young when you ride a bicycle, but also your brain ticking like that of a young person. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the cure for dementia. All right, comment below if you've ever been stung by a bee or if you've ever seen a zombie. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Forever Green, and we'll see you in the next one.